Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pop, horror, that kind of thing. Today, crime uh, is the next instalment in my ongoing library tour. So if you've watched any of these videos before, you'll know what to expect. It's basically me going through a box of books. Um, if you haven't watched any of them and you enjoy this one, then look at the look for the uh, library tour playlist um, and you will you will find all the other videos I've done so far, which I think there are three or four. So I said at the start, this is a, a crime box. Um, there's definitely lots of crime in there. It's not all 100% strictly speaking crime. There's some kind of thrillery stuff in there as well. Um, but yeah, let's go through it and show you what I've got. Um, so starting at the top, um, we've got Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. I don't think I've done a, a video on this, but I probably should do because it's really good. Um, if you've not read this or the, his previous book, um, Blacktop Wasteland, they are fantastic. They're really excellent, um, you know, kind of crime novels, but they've got a, a real pulp sense to them as well. It's like he's, you know, I think I said in, in a prose review I did for this that it's like he's reinvented pulp for the 21st century. I think he's a really, really good writer and deals with really interesting social themes. Um, so this one is about two um, fathers, um, both fathers of gay sons who are married, um, who are um, kind of join forces to get revenge on the, on, on the thugs that have murdered their, their sons. Um, so yeah, a fantastically enjoyable book. Um, next up, I have done a video review of this one. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood by Quentin Tarantino. So his novelisation of the movie. Um, I thought this was excellent. I thought it was a really good accompaniment to the film. Um, it takes the story in a slightly different direction. There's some, you know, some very different stuff in there that's not in the film, um, as well as some stuff that will be familiar um, to, to anyone who's seen the film. But yeah, I enjoyed it and I'm interested to see what Tarantino does next book-wise. Next up, True Crime. So My Friend Dharma by Durf Back Durf. Um, so this is a really excellent graphic novel um, written by someone who was a classmate in high school of Jeffrey Dharma. Um, so it's about Dharma's, you know, teenage years, um, the, the you know, kind of depri well, deprivation is the wrong word, but the, the problems he was going through as a teenager. Um, and I guess there was emotional deprivation there, shall we say, um, that, you know, led to, um, or arguably led to him becoming um, the monster that he became. Um, so it's a, a really fascinating and very even-handed and very honest book. Um, thoroughly recommended. Uh, Mr Morningstar has just done an excellent um, review of this, so look out for that. Um, next up, one I haven't read for years. Um, so In the Cup by Susanna Moore, which I think caused a bit of a stir when it came out. Um, I might reread it because it's not very long. Um, so this is a um, quite explicit erotic thriller, I suppose you'd say, um, about a female police detective. Um, but yeah, I, rem I remember it being um, quite enjoyable, quite a good book. Okay, moving on. Um, so here's a couple that are not strictly speaking crime. Um, so we've got Die Trying by Lee Child. Um, so I've, I've spoken a bit about Lee Child and the Jack Reacher books before, and I'm definitely very much looking forward to the new Reacher series on uh, on Amazon Prime. Um, they're just really enjoyable, solid thrillers about, you know, one, one man against the world kind of thing. Um, they've got definitely got a crime edge to them, but a bit of espionage as well and that kind of thing. So, yeah, very enjoyable. Um, and then this one, uh, this is a fantastic book, Anthrax Island by D.L. Marshall. Um, so he's a, a fairly new um, British author writing thrillers, which are, I guess you'd say, kind of a throwback to the 70s kind of thriller that people like Alistair MacLean wrote. Uh, this is really, really excellent. So it combines a kind of locked room mystery um, with, you know, kind of espionage stuff, lots of action. It's about a guy who goes to this... Um, island off the coast of Scotland that was used in the past to test anthrax, hence the, hence the title, um, where someone's died mysteriously at the military base there. Um, it's about him investigating that. It's a really, really solid thriller. Um, and there's a sequel that's come out recently, which is really good as well. Um, right, let's grab some more. So a few more thrillery ones here. So Testament by David Morrell. Um, so this is a, a truly horrific revenge novel. Um, which starts with um, one of one of the most horrible 
reasons why the protagonist needs to take revenge that I've I've ever read. It's gobsmackingly, um, it's gobsmackingly horrific. The opening of this book. Um, so it's about a guy who's a journalist who's done a story about some um, kind of far right extremists in the U.S. Um, and they take um, take offence to that story. Um, and come after him and his family. And it's a, a really gripping book from Morrell, who obviously best known for creating Rambo. Uh, next up, some crime. So this one I did, um, I have talked about on the channel. So another um, revenge story. So The Third Beast by Peter Lochran. So uh, an 80s British revenge story about an uncle um, getting revenge on um, a gang of teenagers who attacked his niece. Another one I've talked about on the channel, so The Reformed Gun by Marvin H. Albert, which is a, um, a kind of very, I suppose you'd say cliche, but enjoyable Western from the 50s. So solid, solid kind of Western fare about this young gunslinger who's, who's trying to go straight. Uh, and then Die Hard by Roderick Thorpe, which is an excellent book. So the, the book that the film was based on, I think it's one of those movies that not everyone realises was based on a book. Um, very similar in a lot of ways to the movie. What's different in the book is that um, rather than John McClane being the husband um, of someone who works in the building, um, he's the father. So he's an older character, a kind of cop who's uh, gone to seed a bit, I guess, um, who um, you know has to fight for his daughter. Um, so yeah, really thrilling book. Um, it's it's a bit harder edged than the movie. It's quite kind of quite nasty at times. Um, but very, very good. Okay, moving on to another couple um, of books that were famously filmed. So Manhunter by Thomas Harris, the first of their Hannibal Lecter books, um, which is excellent. Um, I reread, so I read this when I was a teenager. I reread it recently and really enjoyed it again. It's a, a really good take on the serial, called, serial killer genre, if I can get my words out. Um, and obviously, a you know, it kind of kick-started that genre in the 80s and 90s. Um, and a good, I, I really like this. So obviously, it was originally published as Red Dragon, um, but I do like this slightly cheesy um, movie tie-in cover. And then also got um, Silence of the Lambs, um, which again, I think is a, a really, really good serial killer novel. Um, I prefer this to the film. I'm not, I, I, there's a number of things about the film that I have problems with, and, and generally speaking, I don't like the way Lecter came to become portrayed in the films as kind of almost an anti-hero. Um, and I think you, you see the start of that in, in the movie of Science of the Lambs. In the books, it's quite different, and the ending of the book is very different. Uh, right, OK. Uh, an author I've talked about before in a previous um, box. Um, so this one somehow has snuck out of that box and is in this one. So South of Heaven by Jim Thompson. So yeah, a really excellent, um, gritty, um, fairly nasty, hard-edged um, crime author um, from kind of mid 20th century in the States. So this is another of his, which is very good. Um, something completely different. So um, the first of, oh no, not the first. So I think this is the third or fourth of the Vinyl Detective books by Andrew Cartmel, um, Victory Disc. So if you haven't read these, they're really fun. So they're about a guy, the Vinyl Detective of the title, who is a, an avid record collector um, and who makes money by finding, um, you know, hard to find rare records for other people, um, which invariably lead him to investigating a crime with his kind of group of friends who hang around with him. So they're quite silly, these books, but they're thoroughly entertaining. The mysteries are usually quite decent mysteries. Um, they're the kind of thing you can imagine being a TV show, which would be on on a Sunday afternoon. Um, they're just gentle, really entertaining, um, very funny at times. Yeah, I, I thoroughly like these books. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, we've got more Jim Thompson. So The Grifters, so the movie time edition of The Grifters. So an, another excellent um, Jim Thompson novel. So this one about con men, as the title would suggest. Um, we've got From Dune with Death by Ruth Rendell. So this is the first of her Inspector Wexford books. So um, from the early 70s, I think. So quite a slim, but um, a really good, solid mystery. You can see why Wexford became such a successful character. Um, something a bit more a bit more recent, but again, the, the first in a series. So New York Dead by Stuart Woods, which is the first in the, what's it called, Barrington Stone? No, Stone Barrington. I always get his name the wrong way around. First in the Stone Barrington books. So he's a... 
um, a New York cop um, who I think in, in this one ceases to become a, a New York cop and becomes a detective instead. So yeah, a kind of fairly, fairly cliched, but quite enjoyable um, 80s, or is it 80s or 90s? I can't remember. Might be only 90s actually. 92, yeah. Um, so yeah, er, early 90s, New York cop vibes. Um, it's, it's kind of exactly what you'd expect, but quite enjoyable. Right, I probably could have arranged this video better. So here we've got another Lee Child book, so without fail, um, another one of the Jack Reacher books. So again, very enjoyable. Um, this one is, so there's a bit of a story behind this one. So years ago, when I was trying to become a writer um, and failing, I went to, in the town I live in, a like a workshop for budding crime writers, which had, uh, I think, four people who'd successfully published crime novels, you know, kind of on the panel talking about their experiences. Um, one of whom was Sue Walker, who actually, she's Scottish, but she lives in the town I live in. Um, so I picked up a signed, yeah, a signed copy um, of her book, The Reckoning, which is a, a really good um, kind of mystery thriller set on a, a remote Scottish island um, with kind of lots of family backstory stuff going on. So yeah, very much enjoyed that. Um, Next up, All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker, which is a really good um, psychological thriller um, about a, a rape case. Um, so quite gruelling and, and hard going at times, but it's got some fantastic twists in it um, and some good kind of narrator type stuff going on as well. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that one. OK, so next up, uh, some more true crime. So Dead in the Water by Penny Farmer. Um, so the story behind this book is really interesting. So basically in the 70s, um, Penny, the author, her brother Chris and his girlfriend um, went missing when they were travelling around the world. I think they were in the kind of Caribbean type area when they when they vanished. Um, and the mystery of their disappearance was, was never solved, but various people's names you know, came up in the investigation. Um, it being back in the 70s and, you know, Chris being English um, and the crime having happened um, in a US territory, it, you know, the, the case moved very slowly and, and just kind of ground to a halt at the end. And anyway, years later, um, Penny, or decades later, Penny, I think, decided to look up some of the names of, of the people that had been named in the case um, on Facebook, which was then a thing, um, and found that these people, you know, were still, still existed, um, and thereafter started to investigate the crime herself. Um, which ended up with it being solved. And this this is, you know, the story of what happened, the story of her investigation into it. It's, it's a really gripping book, um, very moving as well because of obviously her relationship to the crime. Um, and there was also a BBC podcast called Paradise, um, which which came out after the book, um, which has Penny and um, the, the kind of journalist who did the podcast travelling to, to the kind of Caribbean islands um, to visit some of the, the places that are mentioned in the book. So, yeah, a really good true crime book, that one. OK, a few more. Um, so we've got this one, which I guess is kind of crime, kind of horror. So Sherlock Holmes and the Christmas Demon, um, which is one of the you know, kind of newer takes on Sherlock Holmes by James Lovegrave. He's done a few. Um, this was a, a, an enjoyable Christmas mystery um, with a bit of kind of supernatural stuff thrown in. So, yeah, a, a, an enjoyable kind of a, a nice book to read by the fire with a cup of hot chocolate in the winter. Um, I did enjoy that one. Uh, next up, Joyce Carol Oates, The Triumph of the Spider Monkey. So um, a hard case crime um, edition of a, a book that had fallen out of print by Joyce Carol Oates. So this is, um, it's, it's, it's a bit wacky um, and it's quite fun. So it's about this, um, this character, I can't remember his name, he's got a funny name, I think. Uh, I'm not sure it says on the back. But yeah, this, this um, guitar playing guy who kind of wanders around America sleeping with various women and, and various crimes happen. Um, yeah, it was, it was quite a, a fun um, kind of 60s read. Um, and then something completely different, I really hated this book, The Mothers by Sarah J Norton, which is a kind of domestic noir about this group of women who... Um, who meet uh, on, on uh, antenatal classes um, and then one of them's got an abusive husband and it, the, the plot thickens. Um, yeah, it was pretty awful. I really didn't enjoy it at all. I think that's all. Oh, no, not quite it. Right, what else have we got? Right, a classic thriller next. So Rogue Mail by Jeffrey Household. 
um, about a, um, a British agent kind of fleeing across Europe and across the UK, um, fleeing from um, German uh, German spies that are after him. Um, so a really a really enjoyable thriller, but also a really great book about the countryside and about you know living off the land and things like that. So a, a very good one. I think it's from the thirties. Um, so a bit more true crime, Orange is the New Black by Piper Kerman. So obviously well known, uh, very well known now for, through being on Netflix, but quite an enjoyable book. Um, it's it's not quite a, got as much colour as the Netflix series, but there's you'll recognise a lot of the characters um, and it's definitely quite entertaining. Uh, and then finally, a couple of thrillers. Um, so Cold Harbour by Jack Higgins, which I've not read for years, but which is a kind of World War II submarine thriller, which I remember being quite enjoyable. Um, and then Firefox by Craig Thomas, um, which was filmed with Clint Eastwood um, in the lead role of Mitchell Gant. So I, re I read this one quite recently. It's really fun. So it's a, an 80s thriller um, about an American pilot who goes into the Soviet Union to um, to uh, steal and fly back to the US there kind of new super, super secret Soviet plane, um, Firefox, Codename Firefox. Um, so yeah, a good, a nice mix of kind of spy stuff and um, aerial action. So yeah, a very enjoyable book. There's a sequel, which I want to read called Firefox Down, which is supposed to be pretty good as well. So a, another box done on my library tour. There's plenty more to come. So that was yeah, a crime and thriller box. So let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know if you've read any of these books. I'm sure some people will have read some of them at least. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it as always. Um, I hope you're all safe and well, and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheerio.